and welcome back to my channel, Country Conversations with Diva D. This is my episode 10 review of Love and Marriage Detroit. This is the season finale, Wish Upon a Star Factory. Now, I'm going to concentrate more on the showcase because this is the moment we've all been waiting for. The Star Factory, baby, they're going down there and they're going to do the show. The show that has caused so much tension between Brandon and Anthony. Now, when this show started up, I thought Brandon and Anthony was boom, 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 boom. But, honey, as the season wore on, Anthony started adding people <laughs> to their showcase. Especially this fella who causes a little bit of tension by the name of Larik, a.k.a. Sean. That's what Christina calls him. Well, let's get right on into the episode. Brandon and Mom meet with the therapist. And they do come to some type of resolution. Um, you know, it kind of made me feel some type of way for Brandon when Mom said that, you know, it's okay if she didn't talk to him every day. And um, that she has things that she would like to tell Brandon about that he acts like he's uninterested in. And I can see her point there. You know, Brandon, you know, you're complaining about not spending time with mom, but you have to kind of meet her halfway as well. And I, that's pretty much what they came up with. Brandon does not want to have a situation where he is, um, you know, he already lost one parent, so he don't want to have a situation where him and his mom just, just don't ever communicate. And the therapist told them that, you know, find some things that are coming. And I, I agree with her. Just find common ground. Every once in a while, do something that you both like. That is a win-win for both. If there's nothing other than going out picking flowers with your mom, if that's what she likes to do, then go pick flowers with your mom. You said you like a cherry chip cake. Is that a white thing? Because I don't think I've ever heard of cherry chip cake. Or it might just be a northern thing. But baby, we do red velvet down here. Okay. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just a matter of them, you know, finding some common ground. That's my opinion on that. Okay, so the Harper Ray events comes up, and everybody is excited about the Harper Ray event. And uh, Kobe, I believe, is the first to arrive. And Christina pulls her to the side, and you know she tells her that she's happy that she came. And Kobe said, you know, she wouldn't miss it. Kobe, to me, is is the one who is willing to, you know, actually work with Christina. It seems to me that since Christina is what she thinks is a bigger influencer it seems to me that she just want to take Kobe under her wing but not give her any ideas to work with now that's not taking someone under their wing like you know with me and this new situation of um, commentating on these different shows um, I didn't have anyone to take me under their wing it, it was like I said it was something that I always wanted to do and I'm sure that Kobe wants to be an influencer too. But there's nothing wrong with having somebody, you know, by your side, lifting you up. They're all religious. They admit that. They all come from a, a PK background. Uh, Latoya's dad is a, a bishop. And I think, look, I think Kobe and Christina's dads are preachers, if I'm not mistaken, or not preachers, minister, because, you know, Russell wants to follow in uh, Kobe's daddy's footsteps and you know he you know in a previous episode he told Kobe that he had went behind her back and went to chaplain school and Pops was on his side honey Kobe's daddy Kobe's daddy nah, was on his side so Lakita uh, once again mediates because Latoya lets uh, you know she kind of inserts herself into the conversation between Kobe and uh, Christina. And Christina does not like that. She, ha she has an issue with Latoya continuous, continuous, continuously uh, <laughs> excuse me continuously 
inserting herself in their issues. And she's like, well, you know, when she does that, it makes things more tense between them. I think Doc is just a leader. And she feels the need to kind of feel like she always has to de-escalate things. Well, let them hash it out. Like, not Larry's wife, but I mean Bravo's wife. Bravo and his wife are the perfect, Bravo and his wife, Lakita, are the perfect friends to this show. Because they do, unlike Courtney over there on Roa, mm-hmm, unlike her, they are the calm every time a storm arises. So, like I said, this episode is heavily concentrated on the showcase, so we're just going to get right on into Summer Breeze right on back. That dog walking scene with Kobe and Buss. But we're at the Star Factory, and um, um, the assistant producers, they all meet up with Brandon, and they all giving each other pleasantries. And uh, Christina comes in, and you know, with all her advice, and Christina, to me, that's your backbone, Brandon. And that's what in a future scene. That's what Larry means about Christina. Now, Christina get on my nerves real bad on this show. But she got it. You know what I'm saying? She knows exactly what spices to add in to make him to to make him a great producer. She does. And he should hone in on that. Because she is good at what she does. Because she was right there. You know, giving giving Miss Nigel the 411 about how she's not breathing. She's not exercising. And all those things are important. Because I read Beyonce's autobiography. Unofficial autobiography. And... In that autobiography, they talked about how Beyonce would be up in the middle of the night when there were girls in the group that definitely could sing better than her. You know, not my opinion. That's what was in the book. There were girls in the group that could sing better than her, but she worked the hardest. And that's another thing that um, they made clear about Candy. They talked about how Candy was not uh, not the leader of Escape. But, and Latoya, Latasha, Tasha Scott, and Tamika being the better singers. But nobody knows what was going on behind the scenes. They said that Candy was the hardest worker. (laughs) And that's the same thing that happened with Beyonce. So there were other girls that had auditioned to be leaders of the group. It's just that Beyonce worked hard. And Nigel is not putting in the work. That's getting back to Nigel. She's not putting in the work. Because if she was putting in the work, like Christina said, she would have had that breath under control. Moving right along. You have, like I said, the toy, uh, Russell and Kobe walk the dog. They talk about the, the again. Her being involved with the gym. And he says he needs to communicate with her breath better. But moving right along to Anthony and Toya. Now, Anthony, to me, it's kind of hard on the little boy. I forget uh, his name escapes me. But um, he was asking him if his leg was hurt and he was trying to be tough in front of his dad. I, and Latoya, Doc, knew that, you know, something was wrong with her baby. They sit down and have a conversation. And Anthony, once again, says he doesn't feel supported. But, uh, you know, he comes to the understanding that he needs to take accountability for some of his actions as well. And and Doc is saying, she, you know, she don't know what he wants. She don't know what he needs out of this relationship. And he goes and, she, you know, kind of flirts with her and tells her, you know what I want. She say, you know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what you need emotionally. Yeah, 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 Anthony, because you seem to be a very emotional type of fella. I, I, Anthony, Ooh. Yeah, Anthony is something else, isn't he? Well, and the next thing, the moment is here. The moment we have been waiting for. The moment they have talked about for 10 episodes straight. The showcase is here. Ooh. Have mercy. Okay, so Brandon still isn't feeling Anthony. 
and Anthony throws shade and uh, Chris throws shade back and uh, she was like, you know, she's gonna walk around in her kicks or whatever. And uh, uh, Anthony says, well, you know, you should. You know, this is a major event. And she was like, and there um, and he said, and there are major stars at this event. She said, and that star fake star, not all of them. Okay, you better go, girl. And what I like about Christina, even though to me, Brandon is a jackass, and all the men on this show are jackasses, and all the men in Carlos' verse, the Carlos' verse, are all jackasses. But Christina is a ride or die. Okay? So Nigel arrives, and, um, Brandon lets her know, you know, you're the biggest star I have here. He's popping her up and all that good stuff. And then she looks around and she seems to be kind of, is it young or dinky? Y'all let me know. I'm thinking dinky. She looks around, where's the stage? And he's like, behind you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, so, um. At this point, Christina is tired because Christina is working. She's working the room. She's doing what Christina does. And uh, she says, well, I'm going to put on my gym shoes. And he's like, no, you're not. And she said, well, I'm not trying to break my neck. And he says, but you're a representation of me. Now, what these men don't seem to understand on this show is that that's a two-way street in my opinion. He is also a representation of her. And let me go back to previous episodes because I only reviewed this show twice. You know, I came in late in the game because, like I said, I've only been reviewing shows for two weeks now. Yeah, I'm a 13th day and a regular person. But uh, <laughs> going back to the previous episode, he didn't mind embarrassing her. And he all looking and, you know, getting drunk in public. That's a reflection on Christine. That's a reflection on their marriage. To me, in my opinion. Now, Kobe is there, and Kobe does what Kobe does. She gets in the confessional, and she throws shade, and she throws shade at Brandon, saying things like, hmm, I wouldn't be comfortable with uh, Nyasha. You know, Brandon is teaching her moves, and, you know, and, and there's this guy here. He um, seems to be, you know, kind of smitten with Christina. She wants to know the tea. Doc likes the event. And, well, the conversation that we've all been waiting for happens. Brenda understands that there is a history between Lyric a.k.a. Sean, and Christine. Well, Brandon is thinking in his mind that not only does Larry still have a crush on his wife, but he thinks that he's poaching his clients. He does not want Larry at this event. Kobe is messy and nosy. Who is this? You know, she wants to know again. <laughs> Who's this guy? Does he have history with Christine? Now, at this moment, again, the moment of truth for Nyasha. She gets up there and performs, and she looks a mess. <laughs> Even though Kobe is, you know, seeing the choreography, and she's thinking, I wonder what's up. Then he had that Brandon had his hands on his hip, hands on the hip doing the open moves with her. But I mean, it wasn't like she was killing it in the words of Christina. <laughs> so, mm, okay. Now, now, let me say, Nigel nice to me does sing better than Christina from just what I heard. Uh, she's. A good singer and she's just not a good performer 
important. Uh, call Kobe Kyle's Lyrique, Mr. Braid. Oh, Mr. Braid. What is the tea? What she's saying to herself, I'm assuming. And Lyrique and uh, Christina have a conversation. And Lyrique, you know, that's her now that he, he wants to put out some more records with her. And um, she's like, no, 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 no. And he's like, you know, I'm going to tell your husband to get you in the, in the studio. You the best that ever did it. And she was like, well, she starts calling him Sean. And he's like picking up and telling him, don't call me Sean. Uh, and Brandon and him agree to disagree. And Kristen is fine with that because she wants them to check their uh, egos at the door. So we go to the end of the episode and... The whole group gets together. They do a montage, you know, of all the past arguments. And Russell does what Russell does, honey. He gets the group together and they all pray. And it's a sweet moment. But, you know, in the um, in the uh, confessional, they all come together and pretty much say the same thing. We want to keep our sisterhood. We want to keep our brotherhood. You know, if we, we're we not getting along, and if we don't want to be sisters, we need to say that. That's mainly what Doc, Doc was saying. And, um, of course, Kobe has to say something about Christina, saying that Christina and her just need to come to a, the realization that, you know, if they're going to be friends, and that they can both work in the influence the world together. Pretty much, uh, Christina said the same thing. Uh, Brandon says that he really doesn't know where he stands with Anthony at the moment, but he hopes that they, you know, get back to their brotherhood. And with Christina, like I said in the beginning of this, I don't think that she really wants to mentor Kobe like that, like that. And I think, <laughs> it's my opinion, I'm going to give my opinion at the end of the episode. I think that they will be better friends if she didn't um, try to be under or mentored by Christina. Because Christina wants to hold that position as the best influencer in Detroit. Okay? And that is the end of this review and episode. Just remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Come back to my channel for more reviews. The next review I will be doing is uh, Satine. I'm out. Deuces. And this is Country Conversations with Diva D.